Hello, the Grand Observer here with a new video. Lake of Voice is a game I've been meaning to play, and to be honest, I've tried recording this three times, and I've messed it up almost every time. I'm going to turn down the music volume, turn up the voice a little, and yep, we should be ready to go. Good time. I'm not going to start where I was, because then I'd miss a lot. So we're going to do 30 minutes of this, and see where it takes us, ladies and gentlemen. Eh, no, you don't need to worry about this. I grip on my lantern tightens as the fog around us thickens. All the forces in this area are relatively safe compared to Sinlo's. I cannot help, can't help but feel my hair stand on end the further we get. My free hand fingers the hilt of my sword, something akin to, my, to a nervous reflex. Have you seen it before? Bermella breaks the silence, either sensing my unease or assuring himself. I hope it's the latter. I haven't. I've had no reason to go near this cursed lake until now. What of you? Bermella scratches his chin casually as though I ask what his favorite food is. I traveled a long way around it once before. Not so pleasant. Something about it just frays your nerves. Although, even being near it is enough. So I'm not the only one who feels it. A sense of relief hits me, but not enough to undo the buzzing anxiety. The Lake Sinlows must try, most try their best to avoid it all their lives. The hundreds who die attempting to cross its unearthly black water Dragged to death by the creatures lurking within. All to seek me. No wonder you were assigned this mission. There are a few who've had first-hand experience with the place. Even if it, if from a distance, they'll probably keep getting kicked whenever they need someone to cross or have however long he's with them. The male shrugs, bringing my attention back to the dark path before us. At least we're taking the bridge this time. It'll only take two days instead of double that, and the sooner this place is behind us, the better. It would be preferable not to risk it. But time is of the essence. We don't really have a choice. One of our allied villagers, Hema, is being harassed by brigadiers, a band of ruffians we don't have many guards to send as an assist. Only Bermel and Bermela and myself. The least we can do is arrive before we're too late to be of any use. These kinds of squabbles happen often, but have to be put down lest they turn into a blood grudge or all out war. The last we heard, neither is neither option was that far off. I can also see why they chose you to come out here. I glanced at Bemel and eyebrow raised, a slight smile played across his lips. You're always so calm and so serious. Nothing can get to you. You're the best choice they had. A smile now tugs on my, at my own lips. I would like to thank him, but that wouldn't be so calm and serious as he just described. And if that's how he sees me, I'd like to keep it that way. My lack of reaction makes his smile grow, and he chuckles a bit before refocusing on the path. I do the same. It wouldn't be right to let my guard down in a place like this. Bamela appears to feel quite di differently, however. You know the town on the other side of the lake, though. It's not so similar to ours. If all goes well, perhaps we'll have enough time to enjoy the new area. For the most part, I ignore him, nodding when applicable. Appa, applicable. Bemeo is a talkative sort, and if chatting helps him keep his nerves, his worries down, and his sword hand ready, I have no complaints. After a time, the thick fog surrounding us begins to clear. A slick wooden dog, dock comes into view, and with it, the sounds of water gently lapping up its sides. 
The male shifts beside me, stretching his lantern on far as it will go. Someone's already here. A young woman stands by the dock, eyeing us where worriedly. Does she intend to cross tonight? Evidently she has the same question. When we step up next to her, it's clear she isn't simply passing by. She's waiting. Stranger nods to us. Margaret. Kiga the steadfast. The observer. Bamele. Hello. Silence. There's a stuffy silence. Margaret turns to gaze out across the lake. Expression unclear with not much to say. Bimala and I do the same. From here, the black surface of the lake slips disarmingly calm. Wind rushes across its surface with a sound, a sound like whispering. Hush! <laughs> ASMR, I guess. Though perhaps it actually is whispering. I concentrate trying to place the difference, searching for breaks and rhythm. After a few seconds, I feel free. It doesn't matter what the noise is, whether I hear them or not, we're not alone. The Nixie are out there. A feeling that I can't quite shake. Tells me they've already noticed a little group of people on their tour. It feels hostile. My stomach sinks and I insist instead address the man. Where is the guide? Unless he's on the center island or on the complete other side, your guess is as good as mine. It's dark as pitch out there. Panic rises inside me. Panic I try hard to quell. We can't cross without him, and we need to get going soon. You can't cross with him, either. Why not? The woman behind us, Margaret, cuts in with something like a snort. What? I know the guide will be here tonight. I have already made arrangements with him to cross. Pamela and I share a look. The woman seems haughty and willing to put up a fuss. I have his word he'll take me today. It would be wiser for the two of you to begin the trip around, if you're really in such a hurry. Or you can make camp here and wait for him to make the trip back, if you prefer. I don't need to turn my attention to, to Bamela. No, he's my honor. I've stepped in before he can say anything rash. Even if that is so, I my companion and I must begin the trip tonight. Margaret is unimpressed and opens her mouth to argue further. We'll wait for the guide to arrive before coming to a conclusion about any of this. She clamps her mouth shut and then lets out a sigh. You can do as you like. With the matter tentatively settled, Bamela moves away. His fingers begin to tap loud against the bottom of his hill. He shifts from one foot to another, then groans. Uh, What's that bastard even up to? I almost visibly start, but manage to restrain myself. He... he probably doesn't know any better. I'm sure of that. It's not worth mentioning. With a mouth like that, you shouldn't even have the right to ask the guy to take you across. How ludicrous. He's faced far worse than a bit of foul language. Do you know anything that's happened with this lake? I know enough. Margaret is clearly not convinced, but she shrugs and makes a show of turning her back. To him. The guide's father is Garvin the Exemplar. Garvin never accepted the guide as his son, all the way up until he died in this lake. Your statement could be seen as tasteless. Oh. Pamela rubs the back of his neck, his face regretful. My apologies to the guide. I didn't mean it that way. I never knew about his... well, that. A smile spreads across my face, one I quickly wipe away. He really did just misspeak. The silence slowly stretches between the three of us, growing more awkward with each passing second. 
Marco seems irritated and Bamela abashed. We each remain locked inside our own thoughts. Not another word passed in between us. And you do make your own choices in this game. But so I will be playing this multiple times to get the full story. Or get everything possible, hopefully. Eventually a small light appears on the bridge ahead, gently swaying through the foggy air. It gets closer and closer until it comes apparent it's a figure carrying a lantern. That must be the guide, although I can't shake the ghostly aura it gives off. The figure steps onto the shore, but we wait, here, wait for him to approach us instead of going to meet him. None of us are sure how close to the waters we can get before it is no longer safe. He stops in front of us and simply stares. Are you the guide of Simos? <coughs> the man nods. He has a sharp face and weary eye. Well, that's grand. We would like an escort across the lake. Mamela motions to the two of us. And Margaret approaches a strange smile on her face. Hello, it's good to see you again. I'm ready to cross, as we've agreed upon. The guy turns her to face her as well, face remaining unchanged. It must not be a lie. He would have had to say something otherwise. She really does have a preference to travel with him. That's a problem. Is there a way we can all begin the trip tonight? Yes, I will allow all three of you to go. But with that many, at least one will die before we reach the other side. I furrow my brow. It's a disturbing a hud. A didum. And one offered with little emotion attached. Pamela glares back, asking without saying what we're supposed to do with such circumstances. You should go around. The sentence hangs in the air with the second half unspoken. If you want to live. We don't have time for that. There are people counting on us for protection. Why does she need to go? He jerks her finger at Margaret, his face contorts with anger. I don't need to explain myself to you. My journey has already been put off once, and I was promised I could go today. I will be going under any circumstances. She meets Mamela's eyes with a gaze of steel. He starts to speak and she cuts in. An extra day or two shouldn't be that much of a problem for you. Whoever you're meeting can surely wait such a tiny amount longer. Patience is a virtue after all. Then why can't you wait, Margaret? The night is only so long, and if we're still on the bridges when the sun comes up, we'll all die as they sink back below the surface. If you don't decide soon, no one will be going. The guide is dispassionate, stoic. I would almost feel something's wrong with him if I didn't share the trait myself. Mamela pulled me aside, jaw clenched tight. That woman isn't armed. His voice is low. He darts a glance at Margaret. We can easily get her to back off if we make this into an actual fight. After all, we have to go tonight, yes? If one of us really is to die, it'll be her. Would staying be a worse fate than her death? I stare at the dock, refusing to meet Bamela's eyes and try to keep my voice as level as possible. We don't know her situation. This isn't a decision we can make for her. What? Bamela leans in closer, apparently having misheard what I said. I remove the sympathy for her and in, in, in my response when I speak again. The guide won't accept something like that, I assume. His face is grim. Then what else do you have in mind? First of all, you and I cannot split up. Either we both stay, or we both go. Right. That's not a question. I cross my arms, a hand over my chin. I have full confidence in my abilities and in the mellows, but there's no reason not to believe the guy knows exactly what he's talking about. If we go, he might not be able to give the group the attention we each deserve. That would mean we would truly be putting Margaret's life at risk on top of our own. I believe we should. And I believe you. Bamela's reply is firm and steadfastness. 
<laughs> but Mela's reply is firm. My steadfastness seems almost weak in comparison to his to its certainty. He addresses the guide. We shouldn't waste more time. Let's shove off. The guide slowly turns around. Without even a nod to show his agreement, Margaret stares at Bamela and me, something of a resolve in her gaze. Then she follows after the guide. At least she didn't insist we stay behind. We should do what we can to protect her. It's our fault she's being put in even further danger. Exactly my thoughts. We will take care of everything. Maybe I'm being naive, but I have no intentions of letting anyone fall victim to this lake tonight. Those monsters can starve. He turns to follow the others across. I will protect everyone on this trip. I will. We will make it through this. Then I step under the dock and join them. As soon as I step under the wood, the temperature drops. The light of my lamp shines against the water surface as reflected as a mirror. Until we reach land again, death is only one more mistake away. We fall into line, with the guide leading the way. Margaret stays close to him and I behind her, watching to make sure she doesn't slip on the dark and slick wet wood. Bamela brings up the rear. Each of us hold our lanterns in front of us, but it does little good. The fog is thick and the nigh impenetrable. And nigh impenetrable. Consuming the light as if hungry for it. Above the surface of the lake is its deathly quiet. No longer is a whispering wind nor the sound of water lapping at the shore. Just our own mismatched footsteps and the sound of my cricket breathing. Breathing. My eyes drift back to the lake against my better judgment. It's no wonder there's not even a sound of water with how still the surface is. But it seems almost sturdy with the sheen of black marble floor. I've heard rumors the water, water of Sinrose is heavier, more difficult to disturb than natural water. But that's just the weight of its oppressiveness thing. Well, <clears throat> that just the weight of it, of its oppressive thing is enough to keep someone down, even without them. Something even darker than the abyss of our lake flickers just below the surface. Or at least, I think it does. I turn my gaze at Margaret's back. It's better to stay focused. Fall back a bit. You're following me too closely. The guide is looking over his shoulder, addressing Margaret. I'm sorry. If someone gets pulled into the lake, they'll instinctively reach for anything to hold on to. Do not let that be you. Margaret shoulders eyes and she, ne she nods with great seriousness. I understand. Thank you for the advice. He ignores her gratitude. You can speak amongst yourselves if you so choose. As long as you pay attention to where you're going. There is no worth in listening to the sounds out there. If there's anything at all, it'll only be Nixie trying to set you on edge. Alright. Then, could you tell us your name? You didn't have a chance to properly introduce yourself, and I've only heard you being referred to as the guide. I don't have a name. He's facing the front again, his voice as expressionless as before. I have no way of guessing how he feels as he says this. Oh. It's probably not something he wishes to talk about. However, there was something else I wanted to say, so changing the subject is not difficult. Margaret, thank you for allowing us to join you. It is annoying that I'm narrating a female thought and I'm using a male's voice. <laughs> Margaret sh shrugs non-committedly. It wasn't exactly up to me. The guide said he would take you. She hesitates, and then she looks tentatively over her shoulder at me. But... Thank you for saying that. It's appreciated. Bemele and I will do our best to be an asset on this trip, rather than a burden. That's nice. I'm not afraid to be out here, though. Still, at least with your training, you should be able to take care of yourselves. 
It's comforting to know that everyone here is so confident in their ability. Not enough to forget how terrible it feels to be over this lake. I'm not sure if that is fortunate or unfortunate. Believing yourself to be secure doesn't mean that you are. As the conversation lulls, a new sound breaks through. It's the whispering noise again. It's the chatter of inhuman voices, and this time coming from all around us. Taking care of yourself is exactly what you need to do. The guide is speaking again, except louder, as if to cover the Nexus voice with his own. Work to survive at all costs, and hope that everyone around you has enough sense to do the same. That's the only way you'll make it to the other side. Margaret nods in response. I hear a grunt from behind you. Groups tend to go further when they work together to achieve the same goal. The guy doesn't say anything in response to Bamela's grumbling either. I'm not sure whether he didn't hear Bamela, or whether he just didn't hear the statement made, statement made thus far, or worthy of addressing. I have a feeling it's the latter. We go around a large bend in a bridge, part of it forking off another way. I wonder how the guy knows which of these essentially identical paths is correct when something in the corner of my eye catches attention. My attention. I believe I saw something over there. <sighs> Keep walking. No need to worry. The guy's voice is calm. And level, I decide against trusting the issue, not wanting to set everyone on even more edge. What did he say? Perhaps not wanting the conversation to be caught by the guy who speaks softly, though I couldn't quite hear him because of it. <laughs> I take my eyes up Margaret, head ahead for a moment to explain it to Pamela, and stop dead in my tracks. Only one word is able to escape me in my stunned state. Behind. But me behind Bamela stands another figure, looming in the darkness. Seeing my face, Bamela grabs the hilt of her sword. He whips around, then staggers swiftly backwards. Several meters away, a crooked, twisted, a black figure hobbles its way towards us. Some kind of liquid drops off its head, curling around the edges of its face. It almost looks like it's crying. Bam Bamela backs up until he's standing beside me. The figure continues its slow advance, head jerking from one angle to another. What on earth? It's one of them. A Nixie. Yes, Nixie that stumble across the bridges looking for opportunities. The guide is standing next to us. I didn't even notice him approach. The ones that can make it out of the water are generally referred to as prowlers. I had no idea things like that were out here. Is that what Kika saw down the other path? The guide says nothing, instead returning to the front of the party. Margaret watches him pass. Her frustration morphs into nervous optimism when something seems to come into her mind. Well, Nixie aren't slowed down much by swords, but, but at least light keeps them away. Right? Margaret's hands grip the face tight, her face tight, and desperation breathes into her voice. I bite the inside of my lip. Direct light will force it to return to the lake. However, it'll try to drag the light, or you, down with it before it goes. Instinctively, I reach for the hit of my sword despite the fact that it would do little to protect me. Prowler is getting close, jerking forward, stopping, then resuming its slow advance. Okay, does anyone have a light we can leave here? That way it won't follow us. Only matches. Amela spits. He's the only one bringing up the, he's the one bringing up the rear, so he's the one most likely to be in danger if, if it keeps following. The guide, however, moves forward. Don't forget it's there, don't let your guard down, and don't get left behind. What? How am I supposed to keep walking with this thing at my heels? You said it wants to attack! Don't give it the chance. Bamel sputters in anger and guide 
and the guide summarily ignores him. I solidly grab hold of Bamela's up upper arm. Here, I'll lead you like this, and you can keep your focus solely on the Prowler. Make sure it doesn't get too close. Bamela's eyes eyes the guide with unresolved hostility, but allows himself to softly sigh in relief. He gazes at me with fondness. At least there's someone I can count on. Despite the fact I'm going against his advice, the guide says nothing more. It's clear now that he doesn't give a damn what we end up doing. Some part of me is glad for that. I want to help everyone make it through, though. And it would be worse to have to persuade the guide every time help was necessary. Kika, thank you. Pamela places a gentle hand on my shoulder. Not seriously. But Mella's face hardens in return. He moves his free arm down. I fully lick his arm with mine, and now, properly settled, look forward. Margaret is following the guide, with some reluctance, turning back every so often to check on us. I wave my lantern to signal we're catching up. Margaret returns her head to the front and quickens her pace. With a tug on Bamella, we start to follow them. The four of us continue cautiously over the bridges. Only this time, I'm oh, the wet, squishing footsteps of the prowler join the sound of our own. The prowler walks with a set of, without a set of patterns, sometimes fast, sometimes slow. It takes long steps, then short ones. At times, it stops walking entirely. Does it hurt to be out of the water like this, or is it trying to be difficult to read? Suddenly, the whisperings in the lake grow louder. I steel myself, trying to hard to let go, let it get to me. The most important thing in a situation like this is to remain calm. I can't lose my head. Then all at once, I notice the guide and Margaret have come to a halt. Bemily, they're stopping. Bemily slows down as do I. And as we near Margaret's back, she says with something akin to distress. There's another one. I talk on Bamela, and he understands. We draw up close to Margaret, ready to protect her if need be, but the guide holds out a hand. Don't get any closer. Just over his shoulder, I see another prowler stum stumbling towards us, white liquid dripping from its eyes. And the guide's hand turned over in the air, arm up. Give me a lantern. We'll throw it. Margaret extends her own with the trembling hand when Bamela speaks instead, his back still turned. If you have to take someone's, take mine. Yes, an extra light won't do as much good when we're standing this close together. Margaret takes Bamela's lantern from him, guarded with relief displayed on her features. Thank you. She stands, hands the lantern back to the guy, whose hands grip it tightly, knuckles growing pale. Stay here. I can't throw it too far. The light will blow out before it reaches the Nyx. He steps closer to the monster, his movements light night and confident as he nears the crawler. Uh, stalks her back away. Is it only... Is, is it only the approaching light that's making it retreat, or, they, or are they afraid of him? The guide is far enough away from us that the fog is partially obscuring him, hiding his movements. The voices from the lake grow louder and louder. Water suddenly begins to splash across the lake in the distance and on the edges of the bridge. They want him to mess up. That was 30 minutes. I've saved there. As you can see, I've done this a few times. But, I've done this again for the third time, and this time I know it's worked. The Grand Observer is out for another day. I'll be back on this to read more story, and hopefully not terrify it. Can't get the crap terrified on it. Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen. The Observer opened